Well, hello and greetings from me, Colin, and from the Southern Counties Baptist Association team. I want to tell you about uh, a lovely experience that I had about two weeks ago, not able to sleep well. I got up, grabbed a packed breakfast, flask of tea, a folding stool and some binoculars, and went off to the River Stour, hoping, as yes, you've guessed it, some of you that know me, hoping to see a kingfisher. Got to the spot, which is a good place to look. It's by uh, where an inlet, another stream, comes in at quite a rate into the River Stour. And so fish get swept down unwittingly from this other stream. So it's a great place for fishing for all sorts of creatures. As the, uh, I was only there two hours, but as the two hours wound on, there was just a sequence of wonderful gifts. First of all, it was lovely to see a cormorant bobbing up and down, uh, diving under the water and fishing successfully near that very spot. A little white egret that was uh, across the far bank came over, waded into a good place for fishing, had a few goes and also succeeded in catching a fish. And then what I'd come for, what I'd hoped for, a uh, kingfisher flew out from under the mass and tangle of uh, fallen willow on the opposite bank and uh, flew round up onto the far bank, couldn't see it with the naked eye, but with binoculars could see it, watched it for a long time, then eventually it dived in and also caught a fish and flew off, uh, flew off with it. The bonus was being told by a hobby photographer who was there that the otters were coming our way. So I waited, all I could see at first was some ripples in the water and then eventually as I looked hard, I could see that behind the ripples was the nose and the head of an otter swimming and also, of course, fishing, all of them fishing, all these creatures. So what an amazing morning. It was a real halcyon day. Halcyon, of course, is a word that has been used, used to be used, of the kingfisher. It comes from Greek mythology and we've come to use it as being a day when everything is going really well and the weather is beautiful and so on. But this was literally and halcyon day from the Greek Alcado, which we actually use as uh, uh, the word for, uh, the official word for Kingfisher. But so many things that it made me think about. It made me think about, about God being the God of abundance, not scarcity. So often we think about the fact there's not enough resources. God was reminding me that he's the God of plenty. Plenty of vitality and life and nourishment in that river that day for all sorts of creatures to benefit from. Of course, reminded of the Apostle Peter, where twice he was asked that we know of, have you caught anything? He said no, and twice Jesus gives him the chance to actually find that there's abundance instead of scarcity. It also reminded me of the fact that uh, a river is fundamental to human life. Rivers, springs, lakes, we need fresh water, so does all wildlife. And it reminded me of Psalm 46, so often quoted for the words, be still and know that I am God. But in Psalm 46, it also says, there is a river that makes glad the city of God. There's a river. Revelation 22 picks up. This idea of there being a river at the heart of the city of God, the community of God, and there being trees with healing in their leaves for all people. It's such a powerful picture, isn't it? The place of life and then vitality and energy and nourishment and of quenching of thirst. Links, of course, to the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a rich mine of metaphor and understanding, isn't it, of where God brings and is the source of life. It's the place to be. It reminded me, actually, of that lovely quote from Wind in the Willows. And uh, uh, Molly asked about the river. And uh, he says to Rat, You really live by the river? What a jolly life. By it and with it and on it and in it, said the Rat. It's brother and sister to me and aunts and company and food and drink and naturally washing it's my world and i don't want any other what it hasn't got is not worth having and what it doesn't know is not worth knowing lord 
the times we've had together. The river. There is a river that makes glad the community, the city of God. And so a reminder about abundance rather than scarcity. A reminder of where we're united. We're united because we all drink of the one spirit, baptised by the one spirit into the one church, the one family of God. And of course, there's something else here that's so important for us. And that is that rivers aren't always the most uh, easy places or the most gentle places, nor are they themselves always uh, a source of life and vitality. Sometimes they're threatening places. About seven or eight months ago, when my wife Alice and I were walking along that same spot, we needed really good wellies. Trees had come down in the storms. The river had flooded. Almost certainly the Kingfisher burrows had flooded, so we were very fearful of whether they'd survived the winter or not. Everything was again it, actually, unlike this halcyon day that I described to you. But again, as I reflected on what was the flood and the difficulty and what was then, I was reminded again that there is a day beyond the difficult day. A day beyond, as Isaiah 43 says, the day beyond when you're in over your head and when God is with us, when you're in rough waters but not going down, when you're between a rock and a hard place and it not being a dead end because I am God, your personal God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. The Apostle Paul has a slightly different take on it, but again, he's still talking about unpromising, difficult circumstances when he says, God is the God who can work all things together for good. Well, I've really enjoyed reflecting on this one experience, but it's taken me to some important things about who God is. And as we continue in this difficult time, this time of feeling often overwhelmed or even an overwhelming of overwhelmings the prayer is that the whelming of the spirit will be and can be greater still as God works it all together for good as God gives present grace and strength for continuing difficulty and as we remember that we are still able to dig deep and go deep into God who by the Spirit keeps us united, keeps us connected, although we do everything practical we can to do that. And there will be a day beyond. This is our God. He will continue to work amongst us in his world and amongst his people. May God bless you as you continue to trust him as best you can, as you tell him about the sense of being overwhelmed, and as you receive, perhaps in some quietness, perhaps in a place that works well for you, a fresh sense of the spring of living water, the gift of the Spirit, for each challenge and each joy of your day and your time and your serving. May God bless you in all of that. Amen. Amen.